More rain means more flooding, means more insurance claims. More droughts means more wildfires, means more insurance claims. More variability in weather means more unpredictability, and it makes actuaries' jobs a whole lot harder. Climate change is one of the biggest hot topics in the actuarial field right now, and that means that you, as a future actuary, need to understand why and how it is impacting the jobs of actuaries. It could come up during actuarial internships, it could come up during actuarial interviews, it could come up during random coffee chats with actuaries. So if you currently feel like you're a little bit uninformed about why this is impacting the actuarial field in such a big way, then this video is going to get you up to speed. You may not immediately see how these things are impacting actuarial work, but in order to understand the full complexity of climate change for actuaries, I do think it's important to point out some of the areas that climate change is having the biggest impact on actuarial work. So first off, climate change is resulting in a lot more extreme weather events. So things like hurricanes, wildfires, floods, all these things are happening a lot more frequently than they ever used to, and they're more intense too. And this means for actuaries, they have to introduce rate increases to keep up with the increasing claims that they're experiencing. We're also seeing that the areas that were previously impacted by certain natural disasters, let's say floods for example, that area is expanding or sometimes shifting due to climate change. So for example, if actuaries once knew that a particular zone was at a high risk for flooding, well now we might be seeing that that flooding risk zone is expanding expanding, or maybe it's shifting over at a slow pace. We're also seeing that because of the polar ice melting and the glaciers melting, that the habitable land is decreasing. So that means populations are becoming more condensed and natural disasters are going to impact more people because there's more people in one area. Uh-huh, too many people. This is personally the reason I could never live in Toronto. And the traffic. Uh the traffic! We're also experiencing more food shortages and water scarcity. This can result in things like business interruption, especially for businesses that are heavily reliant on food and water, maybe restaurants and water parks, agriculture too. And the fact that there is water scarcity could also increase the likelihood of natural disasters, flooding, wildfires. It's all interconnected. Now this isn't all. Climate change is in some way impacting every single life, but sometimes we don't really notice it because we're looking at things on such a small scale, our own scale. But when we look at it from the big picture like actuaries are, then suddenly we see the major impact that climate change is having on our lives and on our world. So what does all this really mean for actuaries? What kind of problems is it causing? That's stuff that is really important to know for interviews, so I'll get to that now. Now, actuaries have traditionally relied on historic data in order to try to determine how the future will unfold. But now with all the numbers changing due to climate change, there are more things like more wildfires, the amount of damage caused by wildfires, and so many other things are changing. So we can no longer rely as heavily on that historic data as we have in the past. Now we have to adjust for climate change. But a really big issue here is that we as a society don't have the best grasp on how climate change is going to affect us completely in the future. We can make educated guesses for sure, but we really don't know 10, 20, 50 years from now what's going to be different. And that makes it really hard for actuaries to do their job because we just don't have a good grasp on this. So actuaries have to figure out how they're going to account for this in their calculations. Now. How they do this is up for debate. Different actuaries have different opinions, and there really is no right or wrong answer here. And there also isn't any standardized approach about how to do it. Different actuarial models or, or calculators are also going to output different results as well. So there's a lot of complexity here. Now, if actuaries are trying to adjust their pricing models for the increase in wildfires, for example, one actuary may decide that the best way to do it, or they may think the best way to do it, is to take average temperatures and slowly increase them over time so that we know what the average temperature will be each year. And then, based on the average temperature, from that we could get the expected number of wildfires. I guess actuaries are weather forecasters now. I'm pretty sure we do a better job. Now that's totally feasible, but another actuary might think that we should take data from the intergovernmental, intergovernmental, intergovernmental <laughs> panel, the intergovernmental panel on climate change. 
and use those numbers instead. Both may be perfectly legitimate ways to account for the increase in wildfires, but again, there's no agreed upon way to do this yet and no one knows what the best way to implement it is. Now, before you can have a conversation about this stuff with actuaries and potential employers, then you're going to need to know some of the things that actuaries have already started implementing in order to sort of account for climate change and what they expect to happen in the future. So let's talk about that next. By the way, if you've been finding this video helpful so far, could you please give it a thumbs up to let me know and also so that it can spread to other future actuaries? I'd appreciate that so, so much. Thank you. Now, of course, actuaries realize that they do need to incorporate climate change data into their risk models, into their pricing models, all that sort of stuff. It is obvious to them that this is going to be a big factor going forward and they need to account for it. They are still in the very early stages of doing this and over time things are going to get more and more sophisticated, especially as more data and different sources of data become more readily available. There are also focus groups around this topic. So these are groups where different actuaries from different companies, different countries come together and discuss the different problems and issues that they're experiencing along with some of the solutions that they've been able to implement in their own companies. Some actuaries have also started working more closely with climate change experts so that they can make sure that they're always using the most up-to-date information on climate change and the most up-to-date data as well. Actuaries are also working on creating new insurance products. So parametric insurance, for example, is a type of insurance that is dependent on a certain weather event happening rather than an amount of damage done. So for example, let's talk about canola heat blast insurance. Basically, canola plants do not do very well in extended periods of heat. So a canola farmer may decide to purchase canola heat blast insurance. And in that case, if temperatures are above 82 degrees during the day and above 62 degrees at night for four days in a row, then that farmer may automatically be able to make an insurance claim and get maybe some set amount, $5,000 for example, just because that specific weather event happened. So notice with this type of insurance, it doesn't matter how much damage is caused, a predetermined amount is paid to the policyholder and it only depends on whether that event happens. Actuaries also do scenario and stress testing, which basically means they put extreme climate change scenarios into their models and determine if the company is still going to be able to remain financially stable if these extreme scenarios happen. Now, what does all this mean for you, someone that is planning to get into the actuarial field and work with this stuff? Well, let's talk about that now. Almost everything you do in actuarial work is going to have some climate change context around it. And that's why it's really important for you to continue to strive to understand climate change and the impacts that it has specifically on insurance. It doesn't mean that you have to be an expert in this topic and it's not necessarily going to come up on every actuarial interview down the road, but the more you can know about it and understand, the better off you're gonna be. I also anticipate that in the future, there will start to be more actuarial specialist types of positions in companies. And these will be people that advocate for the understanding of climate change and really oversee how climate change aspects are input into actuarial models. They'll also be advocates for climate change and making sure that people in the company understand the impacts that it's having and make sure that they're considering it in different aspects that they're working on in their actuarial work. Now, here's something really exciting. You can actually have the chance to play the role of an actuary working to mitigate climate risk if you are a member of the Actuary Accelerator community or if you decide to become one. Starting on September 16th, we're hosting our first ever actuarial case study where the main theme is going to be climate change. This gives you the opportunity to work with real climate change data and solve an actuarial based problem that you can talk about during interviews and on your resume. This is bound to improve your qualifications for actuarial jobs and also internships and really prove that you are willing to put in the work. So if this is something that you'd be interested potentially in participating in, then make sure you go down into the description of this video and check out the link that explains the whole actuarial case study and how it's going to help you become a better candidate for actuarial jobs. I would absolutely love to work with you on this and I'm so excited to be hosting this brand new actuarial case study just for you future actuaries. Go check it out now and I'll see you in the next video.